the gold shipment from the Cottonwood Mine. All right, now get going. And don't look back. Serious rider again. We'll open the package and let's see. that the box had been dragged a couple of miles into the hills. But outside of that, we found no tracks or no further clues to the bandit. And we combed the country clear to the Arizona border. Right. It's darn funny to me at this stage, Robert. Never steals gold shipments from any other outfit. He only picks on Slade's cottonwood mine. As far as I'm concerned, Slade's loss is only what he deserves. That's a funny way for a sheriff to talk, ain't it? Slade sent word to me that another shipment of gold was coming in on the stage from Cottonwood tonight. The sheriff of this county, I gotta try and stop any more holdups. Listen, Ed, what do you mean by saying that Slade's loss was just what he deserved? Well, as long as you're my deputy, Doc, I guess you got a right to know what I was driving at. A few years ago, a fellow named Bill Harris came to Cottonwood and went into partnership with Montana Slade. They decided to buy out an old man. So Harris went back to Arizona and got some of his friends to invest in the deal. After he'd returned to Cottonwood and put up the money for the mine, Slade refused to cut in the folks that had put up the cash. Claimed the mine had been made out in his name while Harris was gone. During the argument that followed, Harris went for his gun. Slade beat him to the draw. You mean that Slade killed his pal? According to witnesses, it's a clear case of self-defense. But that's a habit of Slade's. I always figured he let Harris go for his gun as an excuse to kill him. Well, in that case, probably the hold-up man that's been stealing from the Cottonwood mine is someone that's got a personal grudge against Slade. Sure looks like it. Otherwise, he'd be taking gold from the other mines, too. How long has the Lano kid been in town, Ed? 
Oh, I don't know. A couple of months, I guess. Mm -hmm. Them holdups started around here about the time the kid hit Palomas, didn't they? By golly, you're right, Doc. We'll see the kid tonight at the Palomas Bar. He'll be playing poker there, as usual. Yeah. myself. I'm betting the limit, kid. I ain't gonna raise you, Red, because I've got you beat. And I know you can't afford to lose anymore. A heart flush, clean high. Well, that beats us straight. Well, better luck next time, Red. I ain't so sure that it's all luck. Meaning? Meaning that I think that you're a crook. Instead of that, I'm going to give you a little advice. Don't gamble when you can't afford to lose. And don't start accusing people when you can't back up your words. I reckon you're right, kid. And I'm apologizing. Howdy, Sheriff. The drinks are on me. You ever know a fellow named Montana Slade, kid? Why, no. I'm turning in, Mike. So see that I ain't disturbed. Okay. You're putting rather early, aren't you, kid? You're yep, pumped filled with questions, Sheriff. But to tell the truth, I'm tired of looking at this joint. We could have a little two-handed game in my room. I'd like to take some of your money, kid. But I got work to do this evening. That's right. The stage is coming in after a while. It'll likely be held up again, and you'll have to spend all night trying to find the road agent. How much, Mike? Two dollars. Listen, Doc. Keep your eye on the kid's room tonight. If he leaves, don't lose sight of him. Right.
Keep your eye to the front. Throw out the gold from the cottonwood mine. All right now, get going. Ain't in yet. So keep your eye on it. Right. Held up. Yeah, the buckskin bandit. Where? Why, just before we got in here. Well, can you beat that? Hey, that was a dummy at the table in the kid's room. The kid himself just came through the back window, dressed up in buckskin. Let's look this Leno kid up. Right. down to see what it was all about. You'll soon find out. You're under arrest.
You ain't got a chance, kid. We've been tricked. It's the dummy again. Come on, let's get out of here. Why, here's another package, just like the one we received a month ago. You... Amy, and it's heavy. Here, hold that. Well, old pal, we've paid them all back. Now we're on our way to Cottonwood to get a look at Slade. And a few supplies won't do us any harm either. Ain't you out working your claim, Dad Davis? You ain't gonna strike any gold around this place. I ain't gonna strike no gold nowhere, Aggie. Then how are you gonna pay the board bill you owe me? You said yesterday you were striking a rich vein. I was, but the shaft filled up last night. Why? Didn't you have it timbered strong enough? I did, but it wasn't just a cave in. I'm betting Slade had a hand in helping it along. Slade? Yes. He knew I was striking the same vein as the cottonwood mine, and he's been trying his best to keep me from working it. I'm going to hunt up Slade and have a showdown with him right now. He ain't going to do no such a thing, Dad. Slade, bad medicine. You wouldn't have as much chance with him as you have with paying me what you owe. I reckon you're right, Aggie. I better move. I can't keep on living here if I can't pay. Ah, you're an old fool. Living here ain't much better than starving. I guess if I want to keep on feeding you, it's nobody's business but mine. I ain't told you the worst, though. Thinking I was going to make a strike, I sent for my daughter, Ruth. She'll be along any day now. Well, my rooms ain't full, are they? She might better be living in one of them than 
having it stay empty. When your daughter arrives, you bring her here, money or no money. some bacon and some beans. I'll pick them up later. Okay. on the track of the galoot that's been holding up the stage. I now I'm renamed the Lano Kid. Give me the thing. Fill up the stranger's glass, too. I ain't drinking anymore. I reckon another drink won't hurt you much. I'm kind of particular. Sometimes. Meaning what? Use your own judgment. Come on, boys, lick her up. Hurry up. Come on, lick her up. Here's to the capture of the Lano kids. Here's hoping they get it. Here's Start up again. Come on. Howdy, Davis. I'm setting them up. I ain't drinking with you, Slade. And what's more, I'm accusing you and your men of filling up my mind shaft. You'd better be careful about accusing people. I'm sticking by what I said. I struck the same vein that runs into your mind, and you didn't want me to work it. I wouldn't throw my gun down on old man Davis. But you'd better not crowd me too far. I never filled up anybody's mind shaft. Maybe you'll drink with me. Why, you interfering? dollars. He's all right. Yeah. Are you hurt, Slade?
Where's Davis? He's just gone outside. Hey, Davis! Hey, listen here. What do you mean by accusing me of something your mind? I didn't mean exactly what I said. Why, you old prairie dog? Davis. Son lost his head after him and Slade had some words. He ain't hit serious. Let's take him to the boarding house. All right. dangerous, Mrs. Simpson, but he must be kept quiet. I won't let no one disturb him, Doctor. He's all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Simpson. Bye, Doctor. Dad Davis to keep away from Slade, but he wouldn't listen to me. When a man feels he's been wronged, he does foolish things sometimes. Are you speaking from experience? Perhaps. Well, anyway, it'll be a long time before Dad will be well enough to work his claim again, and he can't afford to hire anyone. You can get somebody to start digging out the caved-in shaft. Davis can pay me back when he uncovers the ore vein. Oh, we're sure grateful to you. But who will I say loaned him this money? He ain't told me your name. You just tell Davis it was the Lano kid. The Lano kid. Nothing, Miss Davis. I always stop and rest the horses after they made this grade. I was hoping it was a holdup. I always wanted to meet a real western bandit. Well, these bandits are not all that they're cracked up to be. Anyway, 
Stage ain't never been held up on the way to Cottonwood. Only when I'm carrying gold from Cottonwood to Palomas. But this Lano kid bothers me. Who is the Lano kid? Oh, he's the hombre the sheriff suspects. But nobody's actually seen him doing the robbing. So I ain't so sure. He just rides up back of the stage and says, keep looking ahead and throw off the gold. How thrilling. But thrilling or not, I ain't been curious enough to risk looking around. That's what I call being smart, driver. Both of you, put up your hands and don't look around. Driver, didn't you say the stage was never held up going to Cottonwood? Shut up. I ain't carrying any gold this trip. I know it. I just want you to do a little errand for me. Give this note to Slade at Cottonwood. The driver's been telling me about these holdups. And if you are the lame old kid, I guess everyone in Cottonwood will know it when I describe you. All right, driver, get going. And keep looking ahead. You've got no one to blame but yourself. I told you not to look around. You see, it wouldn't be exactly fair for you to go into town and tell what I look like. The law would be after me without giving me a fair start. Well, now that that's settled, what are you going to do about me? I'm going to give you a horse and let you ride. Come on. Free to go? Any place the horse takes you. I guess you can't be so bad after all. I hope you'll keep on thinking that way, ma'am. This is as far as we're going. I think it's perfectly wonderful out here. I always wanted to see a real bandit's hangout. You are a real bandit, aren't you, Mr. Lano kid? Look here, young lady. This is no joke. I brought you here because it's safer than turning you loose. You might as well go in the cabin and make yourself at home. There it is. Now fix us something to eat. Listen, 
If you want something to eat, you can fix it yourself. I wouldn't cook for the best man on earth. And you're the worst. You'll do as I say. Oh. You ought to study up on how to be a bandit. In storybooks, they're always more polite and gallant to the young damsel in distress. show you where your dad lives, Miss Davis. I've got to find the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> you know you get two years for talking to yourself, Clem? <laughs> Clem's going loco since he went to drive in this stage. Where's the sheriff? Right back there. What's up, Clem? Another robbery? Nope. Worse than that, Sheriff. Kidnapping. I stopped to rest my horses at the top of Boulder Grade. The Leno kid stuck me up. Ruth Davis was on the stage. He must have taken her off. She was missing when I got to Cottonwood. How could he kidnap her without you knowing it? The kid throwed a gun on me from behind, as usual. I couldn't see what was happening. When he says, get going, don't look back, that's what I done. Did the Leno kid haul up the stage on purpose to steal a girl? No. Nope. He just handed me this note which he wanted me to deliver to you. Boss, I think the gent that wrote that note is the one that's been holding up the stage and getting away with all the gold. I think you're right, Zeke. I've never seen that galoot, but I sure remember his voice. Well, here we go. Let's go. I think the hombre I had the fight with this morning is the Lano kid. He's the only one that knew about old man Davis and his mind that stood up for him. When you hit Palomas tomorrow, get a picture of the Lano kid. And if the description's what I think it'll be, I'm putting up a reward for him, dead or alive. than you are a bandit, Miss Elaine O'Kin. When my father's mind starts to pay like he says it will, I'll have him hire you. So your father has a mind, has he? Oh, yes. One of the best in Cottonwood. His name's Davis. Davis? Yes. In case you'd like to know, my name is Ruth. I've been teaching school back east. I'm 23 single, and when you make up your mind to let me go, I intend to live in Cottonwood. I guess I made a mistake bringing you here, Miss Davis. I'm going to give you a horse and let you go to your father.
I reckon you'll be able to give a pretty good description of a stage robber when you reach Cottonwood. Turn the horse loose when you get there. He'll come back by himself and maybe beat the posse here. Good to have you with me, Ruth. So where's the trip in Clem's old stagecoach rough? I'll never forget it, Dad. <laughs> but you must lie quiet and sleep. I'm going down and see if I can't help Mother Simpson. All right, honey. How's your pa? Oh, he's feeling much better now. I wonder if the posse is still out searching for that stage robber you described to them. I haven't heard them return to town yet. They'd have a hard time finding him. At least, not till next Christmas. Why next Christmas? Because it sounded to me more like he was describing Santa Claus. Was he broad-shouldered and handsome? Well, maybe he was. <laughs> I thought so. It was the lay no kid. You're not going to give him away, are you? <laughs> I should say not. I just wanted to make sure that's who it was. You've been here only a short time, Ruth. And Slade's been in twice already to see you. I don't know why Slade should come to see me. After he shot my father. He's probably powerful sorry he shot your pa. Now he's got a good look at you. Come in. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry to bother you ladies again, but I have some very important news for you. Well, let's hear it. The town officials heard about you being a school teacher, Miss Davis. So they held a meeting and decided to offer you a position teaching in Cottonwood. Some time ago, we built a schoolhouse, but it's never been used. Will you accept? Sure, she'll accept. So when do you want her to start? Next week, if possible. Well, under the conditions, Mr. Slate, your offer is more than welcome. I'm very grateful to you. Don't mention it, Miss. We officials of Cottonwood are the ones to be grateful. Excuse me. Davis. I'll speak with you further tomorrow. my way to town from mine. I thought I'd stop by and walk home with you. 
if it's agreeable. Why, uh, certainly, Mr. Slade. That unfortunate shooting of your father has given me a great deal of worry, Ruth. Because I know how you must feel about it. Everyone says you shot in self-defense. So let's forget the whole matter. It's very generous of you. It gives me hope that someday I may... Uh, how are things at the mine, Mr. Slade? We're making another gold shipment on the morning stage. As the Lano kid seems to have been frightened away. No one has seen or heard of him for a week now. Uh, maybe he's left the country. I hope so, for his sake. I'll see you later, Mr. Slade. Goodbye, Ruth. shouldn't have come here. There's a reward out for you. So you didn't give them my description after all. I didn't give you away, kid. I lied. But Slade got a picture of you from Palomas. I knew it. For a week I kept wondering, Ruth. When nobody showed up looking for me, I decided to ride into Cottonwood to thank you. But you've got to leave Cottonwood. These posters are all over town. I can't leave right now. But you must. You, mu you might be killed. Would you care? You know I would. It's the Lano kid. Don't let him get away.
Dead, Sheriff. <laughs> well, kid, you and Slade finally had a showdown. Yeah. And I reckon you're here after me. Not right now. Me and Doc went across your cabin in the hills and found out what you were doing with cottonwood gold, Tom Harris. Bill Harris was my father, Red. So there ain't much more to say. I am ready to go back with you. Go back with me? I say, Tom, you was only taking what belonged to you. As far as I know, there ain't no law against that. As for shooting Slade, that was in self-defense. Slade was a buzzard anyway. Slade ain't hit dangerous, Doc. I found this in the pouch under his shirt. A deed to the Cottonwood Mine, made out to him and Bill Harris. Reckon he was afraid to record it. Show that he was only a half owner. And Tom here is entitled to the other half of the Cottonwood Mine. Slade will probably be leaving the country as soon as he gets well enough, Tom. So maybe you better start looking around for a new partner. <clears throat> what do you think about this partnership business, Ruth? Well, considering the fact that you are a good cook, 